Let's learn in this video how to create a Terraform multi-layer architecture. In the development lifecycle of a Terraform project, we would have even more and more resources that will be created as part of our infrastructure. Thus, we would have even more and more Terraform files. Those files will live inside the same folder and that folder will become a monolithic. Having that architecture would make it really difficult for us to manage things like the security, maintainability, and also the governance. So we will see how we can solve this issue using the multi-layer architecture. Let's see how that works. With Terraform monolithic approach, we would have one or multiple Terraform configuration files like for the modules, virtual machines, network, SPN, users, and applications. And those are part of the same folder. This means Terraform will produce one single Terraform state file, and that is a huge issue. That Terraform state file will be a single point of failure. First, each time we want to apply the new infrastructure, that state file will be locked. So the other teams cannot use that state file and other teams cannot uh, deploy uh, in parallel their infrastructure. So they need to wait until that file is unlocked, then they can deploy their infrastructure. Another disadvantage of this architecture is that all the teams, because they are collaborating on the same Terraform configuration files, this means, for example, the project teams can access the secrets created by the infrastructure teams, for example, and that is an issue. And then another disadvantage is that when I want to deploy a small change to my infrastructure, that change might impact all the infrastructure created by, by that Terraform configuration file. So we want to minimize that impact and we want to only touch the only resource that should be changed by that uh, change in the configuration. However, the advantage of this architecture is its simplicity because here we have only one single Terraform folder containing one single state file. Let's now see another architecture without these disadvantages. When talking about monolithic, that will remind us about another domain where we have the problem of monolithic, which is software design. In software design, we can have one single application that will do everything inside the application. And then to enable that application to scale, we have invented the microservices. So now each microservice will be responsible for only one single thing inside the application. And those microservices can talk to each other. Well, we'll apply the same principle for Terraform configuration files and we'll call it Terraform multi-layer architecture. With this architecture, we'll go to split the Terraform resources into not only multiple files, but also into multiple folders. And each folder will be responsible for a single responsibility depending on the domain. I mean here, if it's creating infrastructure or if, it's or if it's creating security components or deploying the application and so on. And also each folder is meant to be managed by a single team or by a different team. So let's see what are those different levels. Our first level is actually the level number zero, which is before cre start creating my Terraform infrastructure, I need to provide the infra for Terraform itself. So I need to install Terraform. I need to install the, the first uh, build agent for my DevOps pipelines, for example. And then I need to create the SPN for Terraform. So for the first time, I will not use Terraform to create that SPN. Maybe I need to just create it manually. So, so that makes the transition between going manually into the automated processes using Terraform. And also I need to create the storage account for the state file, maybe create the subscriptions for each team. So all of these could be done uh, manually. So for that, we put here the level uh, zero. Then comes the level number one, where here we'll go to provision the security and compliance. And this should be managed by the team that manages the security in our organization. So where here we'll go to provision the airbag roles and then we'll attribute those rules to the different teams and then we'll go to manage the monitoring for our infrastructure and for our application and this means maybe creating the log analytics instance configuring azure monitor and then we'll go to create the shared services like for example the uh, hub network then comes the level number two, where here we'll go to configure the hub and the spoke networks. So mainly here we create the network 
for our infrastructure. So we'll go to create, for example, the hub network, create the different spokes, a spoke for each environment or a spoke for each application or a spoke for each team. And then we go to also peer uh, or create the peering between the uh, spokes and the hub network. And that includes also configuring the disaster recovery plans and creating the backups for our infrastructure. Now that we have the spokes already created, we'll go to the level number three and we'll go to deploy our application infrastructure. Here I mean that's going to be the landing zone for our applications. So we'll go to deploy resources into the spoke network. Here we'll go to deploy resources like, for example, the AKS cluster, the virtual machines, the firewall, the application gateway, the ACR for the registry, the key vault, app services, app service environment, and any component that is part of your application architecture or application infrastructure. Now that we have all the infrastructure required to run my application, I'll go to run the application itself as part of the level number four. So here we'll go to deploy the front-end applications, back-end applications, deploying containers, maybe if I have containerized applications, deploying all the microservices. And this could be done by other tools than Terraform, maybe using some uh, scripts, but I can also do it with Terraform. We can still leverage the Terraform providers, for example, the Terraform provider for Kubernetes, or that is the one using Elm charts. So I can leverage these tools to continue using Terraform to not only deploy the infrastructure, but also deploying the application itself. So I would have here my entire stack for the application. It will be managed by Terraform. Great. Now let's talk about how we can automate all of these deployments of these different levels using DevOps pipelines. First rule here is that each one of these levels would have its own Terraform state file. That is like what we have in software design where each microservice would have its own database. The second rule here is that each level would have its own managed identity or the service principle that will manage infrastructure on that level. So that managed identity would have access to the Terraform state file and also access to that part of the infrastructure. The third rule here is that for each level would have its own build agent or the runner that will go to deploy only on that level and that will use only that service principle or the managed identity and will access only one single Terraform state file. Then we'll go to apply this for each level. So each level would have its own Terraform state file, its own managed identity and its own build agent. Let's now see a simple implementation of this design architecture in this GitHub repository where here we have different layers for creating the Azure Active Directory groups, users, SPNs, managed identities, then creating the network hub, then creating the landing zone or the spokes, then creating the AKS cluster, creating the components of the cluster, and then deploying the application itself. Let's see, for example, for creating the hub, which is documented in this link right here. So we would have here creation of the different resource groups, creating the firewall, the hub networks, the bastion hub, the jump box, virtual machines, and so on. Then going to the another level here, we we'll go to deploy the landing zone itself, which is gonna go create resources into a specific resource group, like the route table, the peering between the hubs and the spokes, creating the uh, private DNS zones. And then for another level, we'll go to create the resources that supports AKS, like here, the container registry, the key vault, private endpoints, and then we go to the level where we go to create the AKS cluster itself. It's going to be a private cluster in this case. Then we go to create the log analytics as part of that deployment, create the managed identity and create the other identities that will be used by the applications. And then at the last level, we'll go here to deploy the application. So that could be done, as I said, using Terraform or using uh, scripts. So one thing to keep in mind at the end of this video is that here I have given an example with splitting that Terraform uh, configuration into four or five levels, but that could be actually two, only two levels or that could be even seven, eight levels depending on your use case, depending on how many teams you, ha you have, on depending on what is the ar real architecture you are creating and depending how you architect your uh, infrastructure itself. Thank you.